Good morning or afternoon, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to today's Hangout. I'm Monique Bowman, the NSCAA's Communications Manager, as well as today's moderator. So as we all know, the game of soccer is continuing to evolve at every level in every part of the world, but uh, especially here in the U.S. So our Hangout panelists today um, from the NSCAA and the Club Champions League are going to kind of touch on the evolution of the game here in the States, as well as the player development model and what both organizations are doing to kind of help influence the game stateside. So with us today, we have NSCAA CEO Joe Cummings. And then from the Club Champions League, we have Steve, uh, sorry, my screen is frozen. Uh, Steve Dan Buskey, CCL Vice President, as well as the Executive Director at Beach FC. And then we also have Danny Beamer, CCL President, as well as the uh, Executive Director at Roanoke Star FC, uh, SC. Excuse me. So um, if you've joined us for our Hangouts before or this is your first time, um, this is a very interactive type discussion. So if you have questions, feel free to email us and we'll try to get, get them answered on air. You can email them to, at, to sorry, marketing at nscaa.com or you can tweet them using hashtag nscaaccl and we'll try to address them on the air. So we'll kind of roll into today's discussion and um, this first question will go uh, to Danny. For those who aren't familiar with the Club Champions League, uh, tell us a little bit about the club, the league's purpose and its origin. Well, the league started back in 1997, and it originally started with five clubs. Dave Amsler, who was the former president, and myself and a couple other directors got together actually at an NSCAA convention. And uh, Dave came up with this great idea to do a club-centric league. Um, and so it started in 1997 with just five clubs, and it was, like I said, a club-centric league where the whole club would go to the same site and play all their games in the same day, which helped with, you know, player development, uh, movement of players. Uh, you could do guest playing. Um, also helped with your coaching development because all your coaches were all at the same site. Your directors of coaching were able to to watch all the teams and the coaches. So it was just a, a fantastic idea for a club league centric model that now has expanded into 16 clubs all the way across the state of Virginia and Maryland. Perfect. And Steve, could you um, tell us a little? Well, how does the Club Champions League fit into the American soccer landscape, and how does um, it align with how player development is changing? Yeah, you know, we feel we feel that, uh, as Danny just said, the uh, the CCL and prior BCCL was one of the first club-centric models. And, and you know, if you look now, and just in our region alone, there's more and more of these club-centric uh, leagues that are sprouting up. I think people recognize that, you know, having your teams have to travel independently from the director of coaching and different things um, doesn't really work. So when you're able to watch 16 games in a given day, have the director of coaching, uh, as Danny said, on site, able to evaluate players, evaluate coaches, it's just much more appropriate. You know, the other thing uh, with how our league is structured uh, that, that is unique um, is that our board of directors is made up fully of technical professionals. So um, if I'm playing Danny's club, for instance, uh, the players are a member of the club, not just the team. So I could pull up anybody from my club. If I'm going to travel and play Roanoke, and I say, Danny, uh, I'm bringing up two or three of my second team players in this age group. I'm going to play this player up. And we really don't have the, the, the um, you know, the, the administrative red tape to cut through because our leadership is comprised completely of technical professionals, the, the technical directors and directors of coaching uh, in each club and therefore, you know, we're, we're not being told what to do. We're, we're working together collaboratively to figure out where the best, you know, player development model fits in. And I think, you know, in the, in the last 10 years especially, youth soccer has become a minefield. And, you know, you're starting to see everyone was trying to carve out where their niche was. And I think, you know, the clubs that are in the CCL and the CCL as a whole, because it's unique in its collaboration, they're kind of coming out a little bit ahead of the curve and trust me I'm not sticking our chest out because we're always looking for what's next but we feel like we've hit onto something here 
and you're starting to see it, uh, you know, attempting to be replicated uh, elsewhere around the country. So I think it's a unique time, but we, we, we're trying to carve out a good roadmap that, that others might be able to, to follow. Perfect. Um, Joe, I want to get you in on this conversation. So the reason for this Hangout is to um, announce a partnership between the NSCAA and the Club Champions League. Um, could you give us a brief history of how this partnership uh, came about and what the partnership includes? Sure. Thank you, Monique. Um, it began in conversations that uh, CCL folks had with our member club representative, Andrew McGinnis, and then Brian Cook and I started to dig into it a little bit deeper and have further conversations about an encompassing uh, relationship or partnership. And as both Danny and Steve have spoken about, the opportunity to become involved with 16 clubs, like-minded individuals who are interested in the three things that we're interested in, uh, those things that encompass learn, participate, and belong, or education, events, and membership, well, we jumped at the opportunity to have this partnership because of the uh, way that they conduct business, because of the philosophy that they have around player development, and obviously because of the opportunity to have them become engaged in our events and also have a membership piece. So we are excited uh, today to make this announcement of a former partnership, a formal partnership with CCL and with the NSCAA with benefits to both sides. And um, I want to ask this question for both um, Steve and Danny, but I'll start with Steve. Um, why partner with the NSCA now? Um, is there any, I guess, just, oh, that's the question. <laughs> why now? Exactly, exactly what Joe just touched on. I think that, you know, the, the way that we're structured as a league, uh, you know, falls right into lo in line with, with the core values of the NSCAA that, that Joe just talked about. You know, learn, participate, belong. Um, you know, having a having a board of directors fully comprised of technical leaders, technical leaders in the clubs, uh, is important. We're always making sure that our our uh, directors of coaching are you know highly licensed. They're they're uh, they're up to the latest methodologies that are that are taking place around the country and around the world. Uh, and then the participate and belong part. You know, I think you'd be hard pressed to find another. Similar, similarly structured organization where you have 16 clubs that we're all competitors because you know we're competing with each other on a weekly basis. But when we get around a table and we get on conference calls and we have meetings, the collaboration that takes place to, to move the game forward in our area is something that um, you know I think falls right in line with with uh, those NSCA core values. And you know the, the finally for me the, the thing that appeals for us uh, as a CCL to align with NSCA is that you know we feel like we're both forward-thinking organizations, and again, we're not just happy to put something into place. We're happy to try and define you know what the next what the next evolution is um, through our through our experiences and through our through our work. Danny, would you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean the the NSCAA is just on the forefront of uh, soccer in the in the in the country. You know, it's the biggest you know, coaches association, I believe, in the world, uh, number-wise. And we want to be associated with a, a, a great organization like the NSCAA with their great coaching education, uh, their new ideas with the director of coaching, uh, diploma, all those kind of things that they're doing, the online education. You know, like Steve said, it just fits in perfect for what we're doing and what we're doing as a league and for – coaching and player development and it, we just go hand in hand with NSCA. It just makes total sense. And then we kind of already, Danny kind of already touched on how um, the origins of the CCL kind of started in a, at an NSCA convention. On a personal level, what is your connection with the NSCA? Um, how long have you been involved with the association? Um, I've been involved with the association for over 30 years. I'm, I've been a regional technical director. I've been, uh, you know, now I'm a state director for Virginia. Uh, I've been on their national staff doing the, the different national diplomas and coaching diplomas. I've been on the director of coaching staff. Uh, so I've been really involved with NSCAA in the past. Perfect. And uh, Steve, same question. 
Uh, well, I'm not as uh, I'm not as experienced uh, on the NSCA side as, as Danny, but my first experience actually was as a player, and I was fortunate enough to uh, attend a convention uh, as as an All-American. And when I went to the convention in Philadelphia in the late '90s um, to the launching, I was my eyes were open. And at that time, I really didn't know that I was going to get into the coaching side of things, but I found myself uh, at the convention a few years later in the early 2000s. Uh, you know, just trying to take in everything that it offered. Uh, and from there, I've been able to, um, you know, obviously, in a position to being a member and attending conventions regularly. Uh, you know, I, I was fortunate enough; I had never really gone the NSCA coaching education route uh, until about a couple years ago. I took my uh, I took my premier license, uh, and it was, um, you know, just being able to see how U.S. Soccer does it, NSCA does it. It, it is really good to get that full kind of comprehensive look because. All the information out there is good. It's just how it's presented and how it's uh, the methodologies. They all fall in similar lines, but uh, it, it's great that these these conversations are taking place uh, on both sides. Absolutely. Um, I want to kind of get finish finish some uh, questions that were submitted or emailed to us. Um, and this one is from Brian Catalano, and he is his question is regarding all of the organizations out there. Has one developed, or is anyone looking into? working on a periodized model. Um, Joe, I'll, I'll get to you first. How about that? Can I get you? Well, I think that there, uh, I think all organizations now are taking a more academic look at the way we develop players and they are drawing comparisons to what is appropriate for uh, children that begin playing perhaps at the age of three or four and those that continue playing up into uh, much older leagues. And those organizations are looking at this as an academic exercise. And in doing that, they're developing curricula that are appropriate for uh, children and youth players at those ages. But to say is there one organization, certainly U.S. Soccer has done that with uh, their different approaches, uh, as has the NSCAA. But I think what Steve said is really tr true. You take the best of what you have available and you use that uh, for your benefit. And Monique, I know that we're, we're going to be wrapping up shortly, but I, I just wanted to make sure that I added my deep appreciation. I mentioned Brian earlier, Brian Cook, that I added my deep appreciation to Brian for the work that he did in making this happen. Uh, we brought a number of folks um, from CTL into Kansas City for a planning day, and were it not for uh, Brian really working through this with me, I don't think this partnership would have happened. So the fact that we are now aligned with like-minded individuals who care about player development and care about coach development. Uh, perhaps in the very near future, the organization that will be uh, dealing with a periodization or a development program may in fact be that combination that is the CCL and the NSCAA. Absolutely. Uh, Danny, did you have anything to add um, to um, uh, Brian's question by chance? Well, no, I, you know, I, I, it's definitely an, uh, a thing on the forefront, the prioritization of, uh, of soccer and way the development uh, for different ages, you know, the, the number of games, number of training sessions, all that kind of stuff, when you start, how much of the education. So, um, you know, that's definitely coming around. And, and I think we, we look at different models uh, all over the world and, and taking in the information to, to see what's best for, you know, for the American player and I'd also like to you know say to Brian Cook has done an excellent job he's our executive director of our league and he's forming these partnerships which we think are extremely important these long-term partnerships which are going to not only help our league but hopefully help the NSEAA you know in the future for for club development absolutely um, I have another question that came in and um, Stephen it was a separate conversation offline, but you kind of touched on this a little bit. Um, from Dan Woog uh, out in Connecticut, what's the league's feeling about high school age players competing for their high school teams? Yeah, this is this is an important one and, and something that again, as as we're structured, um, you know, we fully support uh, we fully support our, our our high school programs. You'll find across the league, I'll speak for my club, Beach FC, uh, especially. We have a number of our staff coaches. Who are also, um, you know, high school coaches, varsity, JV, 
coaches, public school, private school, uh, and kind of tying this question in with the last one, the periodization piece, it, it's really important that the technical staffs of, of, of both entities work together to make sure because obviously, you know, we have a unique problem in that Virginia plays public high school uh, soccer in the spring, whereas mm -hmm. Maryland plays in the fall. So for us okay. to play each other, we have to get pretty creative uh, in scheduling, but also making sure that from a periodization standpoint that there's not overload on these kids where they're playing too many games a week. Uh, so we fully support it, but you know something that needs to grow in the future is the conversation and the collaboration between school and club uh, mm -hmm. because I think you're seeing more and more of staff coaches that are also high school coaches and some of them get it you know in our area in particular we're real happy with, 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 the, uh, with the relationship because we're able to control some of those controllable but we, we fully support it and we think it's uh, it's an important piece in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a student athletes development. Perfect one last question um, and then we'll um, kind of wrap things up um, it's kind of a two-part question depending on who I'm asking so Stephen and Danny um, what can your coaches, your players, and um, you know, and parents, and people kind of outside looking in, what kind of things can they expect from this uh, partnership? Uh, I guess maybe changes or just enhancements. Um, Stephen, I'll toss it to you first. Sure. You know, I think I think for us again, c focusing on our cl on our club centric model through the CCL, is that we're we're going to be able to expose. Uh, you know, we're we're a club of roughly. Uh, 3,000 3, players, recreation all the way up to our kind of high-level travel select players. Um, so we'll be able to expose, uh, you know, we have, like everybody else, the recreation coach who might be a volunteer mom or dad, uh, that really we have a director of coaching um, specified for those programs, but it's such a cumbersome population that we always are looking for ways to do more. So being able to expose them to memberships, or some coaching education modules that can be specified to the age group that they're coaching, I think will just help create a longevity and a love of the game um, and, and avoid you know, the parents that just volunteers for the season so their kid has a place to play and then they back away completely and they're done with the game. You know, We want to grow the game and we feel this partnership and some of the things that are wrapped into it, we're able to take advantage of some of those opportunities. Uh, Danny, any uh, anything to add to to that? Yeah, and also you not only the coaching education, um, which is you know done personally, but also online the the education, the soccer education piece that NSCA is doing online is is phenomenal. And then on the player side, you know the the all American things, those things getting players recognized and for for doing a good job, you know, is is very important too. So I think this relationship will just enhance all of those things. Perfect. And Joe, um, for speaking on behalf of the NSCA, so what can our our members perhaps notice or see with this partnership um, from your perspective, I guess? Well, and the partnership cuts across all three of those offerings, those pillars that we've spoken about. So there is, uh, as other members are listening and wondering, could this be my league? Could this be my club? The answer is an emphatic yes. Uh, there is a learn piece. So as we were talking about what are the offerings, there's a, a very important learn piece. And Steve, just, Steve spoke about that. There is a benefit for coaches at all levels whether it be from our level one all the way up to our premier, uh, an opportunity for them to avail themselves of those educational offerings. So that exists now within this league uh, with some price reductions. So there is a benefit for, this, uh, for those coaches as part of this partnership. The participate piece uh, is, is a big chunk of this. A number of coaches uh, from, from CCL will now be attending the NSCAA convention as part of this partnership. So every year we know that a group of coaches are going to be coming from CCL and that are going to leave having experienced the convention. And then the third one is the belong piece or the membership piece. It's, uh, it's adding more members to the, to the list of those that belong to the NSCAA. So other clubs, other leagues can look at this. <laughs> this is a real uh, far-reaching and very um, interesting model. Uh, this is the first of its kind. Uh, we've never done anything like this, and it was very, very important for us to have uh, the, the, the breadth of meetings that we had in developing this program 
but it is definitely a, a one of a kind program because it avails uh, every single person, every single person, coach, parent, player within the club, within CCL and these 16 clubs, now has an opportunity to experience uh, what the NFCA can offer them. Perfect. Um, well, we're going to have to wrap up. And uh, Steve, Danny, Joe, thank you very, very much for um, your time today and um, speaking with us about this partnership. Um, also, a shout out to uh, Brian Cook uh, at the CCL for all of his help in getting all this coordinated, as well as you know the NSCA staffers that um, did all the, the footwork to get this partnership done. Um, I'm sure I can speak for everyone that we are very excited to see where this partnership goes and how it evolves and how we can definitely make a positive impact on the game here in America. Um, details on this partnership will be made available at NSCA.com as well as on the N a CCL website um, immediately following this hangout. So be sure to hit the refresh button as much as possible to see that. And um, continue the conversation on Twitter. You know, tweet at us if you have questions. Um, we want to hear from you. So uh, be sure to get, get to us. Again, thanks all. Thank you. Thank you.